Today is June 26. This offense flat out stinks right now. They can't score runs, period. Is there more help on the way? Is that even the answer? Let's break it down. You're listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Woo! Yins guys, thank you for listening to the Bridge to Bucktober podcast where we talk all about them Pittsburgh Pirates and that. My name is Josh and I'm joined here with my, by my brother Jake. What's up, Jake? Hey man, what's going on? You ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, meh. 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 These are tough weeks, man. Yeah, and they're just tough. You know, we like to keep things positive here. Mm -hmm. We like to be, you know, we like to, to find a silver lining. This has been difficult. I have a feeling we're both going to be a little bit cranky here tonight. We got rain coming here. I don't know where you're at. We got rain coming here. I'm on a tornado warning right now. So I guess if something happens and we lose connection, I'll just pause this thing. I've got a battery backup, so I'll pause this thing or stop it so we can pick up where we leave off. But essentially, if I lose power, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll just wait till I get power again, or maybe I'll just release it like that. I don't know. We'll see. Let's just hope that doesn't happen. Well, I wouldn't be able to release it because I wouldn't have internet right. to upload it. So, yeah, <laughs> no clue. <laughs> no clue. I think I've got like 12 oh, minutes once the, to shut everything down once the power goes out. Anyway, the power's gone out of the Pirates' bats. You like that segue? Everything's gone out of the pirates' bats. Everything. All right. Can we just get a couple good things out of the way? Let's do like let's do a little let's do a little thing here. Um, Nick Gonzalez called up. Major League debut. Uh, what, <laughs> we get to save the claps for his first hit for another episode. So far, he's zero for eight with four strikeouts and a walk. So, um, but come on, I mean, he's played two games in an at bat. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. let's let's. Let's give him a minute here. Cal Mitchell was sent down. Velasquez moved to 60-day injured list uh, to make room for him on the 40-man. And then today the Bucks acquired a relief pitcher, Andre Jackson, for cash and DFA'd Matthias. Um, he's he's optioned to AAA already, so I don't know. But they, got, they have to do something. Yeah. I understand this isn't an answer, but, like, w arms are falling off. So they've, I mean, right. they have to do something. It's either they acquire Andre Jackson and bring him up at some point this season, or you're going to see Dwayne Underwood again and Chase DeYoung again. Uh, I, I, I'll take a chance. Yeah. so I'm with you on that. All right. So we got one more clap here. We got 400th double for Andrew McCutcheon. We know we're talking about the milestones with Kutch. He gets his 400th double. We like that. Um, once again, it's just one of those things that when I start comparing all of the um, – the career numbers when you include the 400 doubles and the, and if he can get to the 300 home runs, I mean, he will, but if he can get there this year, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. go with the 2000 hits, the two, the 200 steals, the, all the different numbers, there's not many guys. There's not many. Right. All right. Um, we lost the series three games. Three out of four, we lose to the Marlins, who are in second place. They're, you know, they're 45 and 34 after the series. So it's not like they're a bad team. You're visiting Miami. So you're the visiting team. So you're also in the middle of a funk offensively. I'm actually a little bit surprised we got a game. <laughs> when you really look at it, I'm, uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm not. 
Yeah, it's bad. I'm not surprised we took a game. I mean, they don't hit all that well either. No. No, Luis Ortiz was dealing. We did have some good starts, four good starts. However, mm-hmm. just like you said, this team does not hit well. This is a team that's well aside over 500. What's that? Aside from aside a rise. Aside from a rise. That's right. But still, he's not. Like, I'm not really scared of him. No, he's hit three home runs all year. But, I mean, you're bad in 400. You're bad in 400. I don't, I don't Yeah, care. one of them was against us, too. Coincidentally, right after I just said that. But, yeah. I mean, I wish a couple of our guys would take his approach and just not swing hard. You'd yeah. get more hits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yes, it's not dangerous, but if you can have people behind him who might be dangerous, yeah, which is the Marlins' problem. I mean, they they score about the same amount of runs we do. Now, that's including a two-week, like, poor offensive performance from the Pirates. Yeah. Leading up to those two weeks, we've scored more runs than them. You know what I mean? They just pitch really well. Yuri Perez is a stud. Mm-hmm. I know that we say a lot of things about a lot of at-bats today. There was a lot of at-bats that people were... I can't believe that. And I'm like, kind of like, I agree with that. But at the same time, like this kid is special. And I'm not sure if it was our approach or if it was Yuri Perez just beating you. And you could see when he struggled, there were times, there was a couple hitters in a row where he'd kind of lose everything. But man, the number of called strikes at the very bottom or off the edge, plus that umpire was terrible, both sides like inches down below the zone and he's calling everything a strike inches outside. There was curveballs from lefties that never even made it to the plate that he was calling strikes. I'll be eager to see that ump scorecard tomorrow. Just a lot out of the zone, but it, it was both ways, you know, it's both ways. Probably why it was a two nothing game. Yeah. Everybody was getting those calls. So I'm not, it's not one-sided by any means. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to make an excuse here. Right. This offense is not good. And there were hittable pitches. And when you're two strikes, how many times have we talked about, you know, you got to protect. Yeah. I think there was an at-bat where a couple guys got locked up. And that's going to happen. Yeah, where they watched right. strike yeah. three, but you could tell it was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. And there was actually a couple that was off the plate. Or low, really, that were strike three. But either way, the offense is at a really bad spot. You got Brian Reynolds on the injured list. Key Brian has kind of lost that hot streak he was on. I still can't figure out Carlos Santana. Like, you got two strikes, you got a guy on third, and you're swinging like you're trying to hit it out of the stadium and it's a closed roof. Like... (laughs) Dude, take a little off. Hit the ball. Yeah. Why yeah. in the world do you ever, not even just with two strikes, but ever swing as hard as he does sometimes? Yeah. It, it, I didn't think that he swung like that. Like, like that, That's been a little bit of a surprise for me. I just thought he had a little bit better of an approach, being his on-base percentage is typically really high. But I don't know, man. I don't get it. Doesn't make any doesn't that's not a veteran move. Especially with two strikes. If you want to swing for the downs, the problem is is swinging that hard means you might hit one four fifty. But like if you just took a little off, you guarantee better barrel and you hit it four twenty. You know what I mean? Like what yeah. does that even do for you? It's still a home run. Yeah, and they, they, you know, I've seen somebody talking about that on MLB Network one day with Buxton because he hit two balls 460 feet plus, and they're like, no one's hit a ball 460 feet, 460 feet for them yet this year. I'm like, yeah, but they're still hitting home runs. Yeah. You don't get two runs for a solo shot if it goes over 460. <laughs> it's like the home run derby. You get extras if it's over 440. Yeah. Yeah, you get extra runs if Come it's over now. 440. Yeah, I mean... Right now, his on base percentage is 311. He's hitting 225. Is that, is his leadership? I'm not asking for somebody else to play here, but I mean, I'd just like to see him. I'd like to see him hit a little better than that. Yeah, just execute a little better. I know he's better than what he's doing right now. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, K 
can that be can that be our silver lining today? And we can just say it about almost, almost everybody in the lineup. We know they're better than what they're doing right now. Yeah. Aside Hedges, <laughs> he's not better than what he's doing right now. Um, I think he is. I think he's better than what he's doing right now because usually he bats like 190 or 200, but he at least hits the ball over the fence. That's actually a good point. His batting average is where we expect it. But. Yeah, last year was 163. He's hitting 160 right now. On base was 240, and it's only 213 right now. And he hit seven home runs last year to his one currently. He does have more doubles already than he did than he had last year, but it's still, I think that's just because a couple of those aren't getting over the fence. Yeah. But he's about he's not quite halfway through either, and he's not even close to halfway through the home runs. Forty more games than he played in twenty one, and twenty one he hit ten home runs, and he's a double digit homer guy in some of these other years. Yeah. Even though the the, the averages are all low, I still think that's he's not bad. Right. He we're still doesn't fall. Yeah, we're getting nitpicky. He, he He's not better than than how he's doing. Yeah. But for everybody else, maybe not Jason DeLay. I think Jason DeLay was playing above. I think that he got enough exposure that that's why he's 190 in his last 30 games or whatever it is. Yeah. Funny there's a catcher I feel like could hit well. <laughs> and I'm not even talking about the one that was called up already. Right. Hmm. Funny. The one that was called up and we're not letting him catch. Yeah. Yeah. Which and I'm, like I'm not even talking about that guy. Hole. Yep. Well, let's just start hashing this thing out, man. Let's, uh, I guess today is all about complaining. I don't. Just, I don't like start, to complain. Can we just start with Henry Davis since we've already kind of gotten there? Yeah. Like, yeah. What so you started my off. Guy, my guy is a great outfielder. Let me just tell you. Like, I think. I think he's. He's got a great arm. Could be. Could be the right fielder of the future if we went that route, and I'd be totally satisfied. But for the time being, we have a hole at catcher, and you brought up a catcher and put him in right field. I don't. I don't understand what we're doing there. And, and like, like I said, I'm not complaining about Henry Davis playing right field. I'm complaining about a catcher that we brought up that we put in right field. Hmm. Henry Davis, the player, I think is a great right fielder, and I think he should play right field. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, you know, obviously it's been a week. It's been some games at DH, some games in right field. I don't know if I'm like. I don't know if he's a great right. He has a great arm. Which is also valuable behind the plate. So I don't want to... He's made some catches already. He's made a few catches. He's definitely an athlete. He's 24 years old. He's definitely an athlete. He's got a little more speed than I think people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. He's an athlete. I'm I'm excited to see him do it. Because if you remember, this is the same guy. We talked about this before. Who said, I am only bringing one glove to the field. If this was my call, if I'm Henry Davis or if I'm the Pirates... I'm I'm saying like, hey, I, I'm gonna settle in here. Mm-hmm. Because his back could could be the best thing we have right now. And I I actually believe that already. Like I'm not that he's currently the best hitter, but as far as like potential, I think that's I think he's gonna be up there. Yeah. And I want him in the lineup more often. Catchers don't play every day. Right. They never have, and they certainly don't in today's game. Right. And they're not just going to DH on their days off. There are very few catchers who play every day. I wonder, because Adley's kind of one of those guys, and I wonder how much he's been playing. Real Muto is the other one. Yeah. I'm looking up Adley right now. We know that Baltimore has played. Um, oh shoot! 
Hit the wrong button there. Where's that at? Right there. So Baltimore's played 76 games. Adley this year has played 73. So he's playing a lot, but he's also mixing in first base. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. So he's caught. I'm pulling it up here. Looks like he's... Nope. Not this year. Wait, he's not played first base? I thought people told me he was playing first base. He's not. A, he's not. I thought he was. Yeah, just catcher and DH, and he's only DH 17 times, 58 games behind the plate. Okay, Adley, like, I get you. You're playing every day. Real Muto's played in 68 games. Yeah, so these guys are playing a lot. 58 games for Adley out of 76. And then he's 17 at DH. So there is some there is some play there. Yeah. Uh, Romoto has played 68 games at catcher. Yeah. Of 70 plus. So, you know, and these are these are some guys that are very athletic as well. And maybe maybe Henry can do this. The problem is, is like he's he's not going to have to because Andy Rodriguez is going to be here at some right. point. And I know that he's not having the best offensive season right now. I know that he's regressed a little bit. He's streaky, which I guess kind of fits in with everyone else that's on the Pirates right now. So what's the difference? Right. But he gives you a better chance than these other guys do. He gives you a better chance. So when, yeah, I mean, is I this it? Do we just keep bringing these guys up? I mean, I know I'm moving the the Henry Davis talk into Andy because, yeah, because I'm, I'm shifting that catcher position. I, here's the thing. We know it's been very clear to us. We know that the Pirates organization is valuing the defensive side of the game for catchers very high. I get yeah. that. So for us to say we're on an offensive slump for a couple of weeks, we need offense, so we need to start replacing guys with offense, well, you can't necessarily just can everything. Right. But you could option delay, bring up Andy, give him the lion's share of the games behind the plate, and keep Hedges around. We do know that Hedges is good defensively. We know that. We know that the brain is there. We know preparation is there. We know the way he works with pitchers is there. We know also know that one thing he's not doing is throwing people out. But that's not a matter of like pre preparation. That's a matter of like your arm's not very good and you're not very quick. Yeah. But he does everything else well. So let's get Andy back there who might be able to throw some more people out and start learning from Hedges. And it's going to be Hedges that sticks around unless you can convince him to take a, a coaching role. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to. No, nah, he's not Jake Taylor. He's not going to do that. And he's not old enough to do that. No. You know what I mean? Like somebody will hire this guy. Yeah. He should be a backup catcher though. I agree. They need to bring up Andy. I still like Henry Davis in right field. I think that we don't have a, a bona fide right fielder. I like Sawinski. Uh, you know, when I think of Sawinski in right field, I like him. He's got a decent arm. It's not great. Certainly not what Henry Davis has. When you think right field, you got to have that arm. Yeah. Give me less of an arm in center field or left field. You know what I mean? If we can have yeah. Reynolds and, and Sawinski... And then mix and match Sawinski with maybe somebody else out there, whether it's, I mean, problem is, is everybody hits left-handed except for him or except for Davis and, and, and Connor Joe. So, you know what I mean? Like you're, but at this yeah. point I'm saying Connor Joe is a, is a platoon first baseman right now. He could play against lefties and Santana against righties. Well, if you had to, if you had to, you could always slide Reynolds into center and, yeah, and uh, Joe, yeah, you're Connor right. Connor Joe and left. Yep. And you also have G-Man Choi coming back soon. He's on mm -hmm. his rehab assignment, so that's not necessarily an option either. I'm just, we're gonna we're probably going to have a couple of those moments where we take a step back tonight and we think for a second mm -hmm. because we're being irrational, I would imagine. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like a little yeah. bit. And it's calling yeah. for it. Like, this is bad. This is This is painful to watch. Yeah, it's rough for sure. 
and they're starting to call up players. I'm not sure. So let's get into Nick Gonzalez. Are you convinced that this is this was the time? Or is this a gut reaction to try to get this offense going? I th- so I, th- I think it's twofold. I think it's a, a gut reaction. But I also think there might be a little bit of their um, trying to start a fire under Bay and Castro saying, hey, guys, your job is not safe. You guys have to play better or we're just going to end up replacing you and moving on. Yeah. I don't I don't know that Nick Gonzalez was 100% ready. 14 doubles, 5 triples. I mean, Indy's a big field. Right. Uh 6 home runs. On base 370. Strikeouts are high and we know that. How do you think that that's going to translate when he comes to the majors? He's going to strike right. out even more. He's going to strike out. So I, but the thing is, is the way that the league right now looks at strikeouts is that they're outs Mm -hmm. and that's it. And I just can't look at it that way. I've seen too many times, even just this weekend where all you had to do was put the ball in play Mm -hmm. and we get runs. I bet you we could, if we just would, there was, there was enough scenarios that if we just put the ball in play instead of striking out in those scenarios, we score four more runs this weekend than we did. I really think there was four runs out there we could have scored, specifically in extra innings. A walk doesn't move a guy from second to third. It does not. Put the ball in play. Now, if they're not giving you anything to hit, that's one thing. Right. But we're seeing that they're giving him things to hit. Mm -hmm. We went deep into that. We complained about the approach that the organization is taking. So we're not going to get into that this week. Go listen to last. Go listen to Friday's episode. We go deep into that where we're very confused because we do see a league-wide, not just an Andy Haynes, a league-wide push of doing the same thing. And we kind of knew that, but like, I really thought we were way up. Yeah. And we're just not. We were last year. We're just not this year. However, it doesn't mean it's not a problem. It's still a problem. There's still room for putting the ball in play. I agree. I've been saying this ever since the strikeout thing has been been around. Uh, Now, you can have a guy in your lineup that does it. Yeah. And you you can get away with it. Yeah. Like, it's fine. Is it Nick Gonzalez, though? Your five-hole hitter is going to hit you bombs, but he's going to strike out. And I'm okay with that. I always have been, always will be. Then it doesn't have to be a five-hole, but you you know. No, I know. Saying. But for me, but it has you can't to be. Have a, a, you have to. You have to. You can't have a team full of them. Yeah, and it has to be a guy who's going to hit you 30 homers. Yeah, because he has to have some sort of production. Right. I want to see some some home runs, and I know that like it's not just it's not just point blank. It's home runs, right? But that's that's creating runs. Yep. In its finest. And if you can't create runs because you're striking out, then you've got to be able to make up for that and create runs a different way. Home runs are an instant way to create runs. That's why I say that. If you're going to have a guy who's striking out a lot, it better be because, and maybe it is the same thing, because he's waiting for this certain pitch, and if he doesn't get it and then he's behind in the in the count, then he's going to strike out more often than not. Right. But he's seeking certain pitches so that he can hit them out. Kyle Schwarber, right? We, we we talked about this. Guys, go listen to Friday if you haven't already, and you'll hear all of those things. Yeah, I'm just not sure that Nick Gonzalez, that that it was it was now. And maybe this is a way to even say, let's get Nick, see if it happens. There are some guys who are like, whatever, in AAA, and they move up and something just goes because they're yeah. at the highest level and they can go. And it's worth it to give him a shot to do it maybe in a time when let's move into some other players. Bay Castro Marcano, we've been talking about this since preseason, that one or two, technically we said two of these guys, have to show that they're a part of the future. Whether that be a starter, if they really light it up, or a bench player, they have to show that. And 
I mean, you can go back. I'm on record saying Castro was was my guy that I wanted to work out because of the power potential. And I thought, I probably thought it was going to be Bay and Castro with Bay moving around a little bit more. Yeah. And Castro more play in that second, third base, um, like, you know, bench role was kind of what I was hoping for. Get a little power off the bench, so on and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and, and Bay, same sort of thing. Be able to bounce around and play some different positions. I've never been impressed with his defense, um, even prior to this season. Um, but he's athletic and fast enough that he's been fine for a for a sure. bench player. Marcano, to me, was a guy who I thought, well, I don't know, because he's shown a little bit of versatility as well. But you knew that Cruz was going to be your shortstop. You hoped that you were going to get somebody like Nick Gonzalez to step up and be your everyday second baseman. And at that point, these guys are playing for a backup role to play those infield positions. Mm -hmm. And none of them, Marcano probably being the most, um, because of the fact that he's been able to play short better than the other two, that I think he's probably the most... Uh, the player who has set himself up the most to stick around. Not sure. to mention Sherrington really likes him. That's why he went and got him. Yeah. The other two guys are not showing it. And I, I, th I think you're right on that when you say Nick Gonzalez maybe was to put a little bit of pressure on those two guys because they have not performed the way that they needed to. Especially, I'm going to say this, because because we saw Castro. He got some at-bats and he got rolling a little bit. Right? Most yeah. of those were against lefties, but he he got an opportunity to get rolling a little bit. And then they stopped playing him against anything but lefties. And he kind of carried that for like a, a few more games, even though they were only playing one or two games a week. And then he just fell apart. Which is the opposite of what you wanted. When you have a guy right. who you want to become a bench player and you find out that he can only play well if he's getting consistent starts, well, that's not necessarily the good recipe for a bench player now, is it? <laughs> right. He's got to learn how to play one to three times a week. That's what he needs to learn how to do. Yeah. And defensively, I feel like he has to. Because you can let some errors go from a, from a backup. Sure. You know what I mean? He has the ability to play positions. He's just also, he, he lacks discipline. And I think the same thing for Bay. I think they lack discipline on defense. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing. Positivity. Bay. <laughs> Bay is fast. Yeah. Right? Castro has power. Real power against lefties. Real power. That's it. <laughs> it all stops there. Yeah. I'm... Uh, it's it's really just been frustrating to watch this competition get nowhere. Yeah, it's you, gotten nowhere. We, it's we gotten still nowhere. Don't know what kind of players these guys are. They're not. And and let's let's give them this. League's punching back. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Yep. You got to make these adjustments all, all all year, all career, your whole career. You got to make these adjustments. So whether these adjustments are hard on the player or are they hard on our team of development saying, this is what you need to do to get on track. You know, they might be telling them, this is what you need to do to get on track. And they aren't executing those new things. We don't know that stuff. That's we're not privy to that information. So where you we're just in this state of reaction and overreaction because we don't know all the facts. We don't know what they're working on in, in the cage. We don't know what they're working on in the off days. We hope we know. We hope we they're they're being instructed in the right way but if they're not kind of right we uh, stay away from andy haynes 
<laughs> so we think, you know. Stay away from him and and maybe you'll start to click a little bit. That's the other yeah, thing is know. some of these guys, the man, some of these guys are, this approach just doesn't work for them. Yeah. And I think we talked about that Friday too. Once again, guys, go back and listen to Friday. It's worth it. It's a lot of this passive hitting stuff. Today we're we're mostly covering execution because it's bad. It's bad all around. Let me ask you this. Is the answer just starting to replace players? I mean, we're talking about 23 and 24-year-olds who, right. like you said, the league's punching back. So do we say, well, let's give them time? I mean, here's the thing. We spent 33 days this year so far in first place. And and we talked about this last week, or maybe it was maybe it was last maybe completely like a week ago. It's it's been a little bit of a problem because we've gotten in our head because we were in first place for so long that this year is about trying to win a division. Right. And I think if you know the team and you look at the team and you look at the talent on the team, I'm not sure that that this team is that team. Why were we in first place for 33 days? Because the rest of our division stinks. We're really not, this roster is really just not set up yet. I could see a roster like this not being set up to win a division, even with the same players that could be set up to win a division. Now, we understand there's a few more. Right. Like Henry Davis, like Nick Gonzalez, like Andy Rodriguez. You know what I'm saying? There's a few more guys that we could add into this to make it click and say, now I think. But experience is one of those things that we need just as much as we need other players. Or yeah. or maybe they're one and the same. Maybe getting these three guys in particular, Bay Marcano and Castro, maybe getting them more experience Maybe they're able to unlock something different. Maybe getting them a different hitting coach can get them to unlock something different. But these guys have talent. It's there. And if you yeah. say it's not, like if, if you're listening to this and you're like, well, it's not. They stink. You're lying to yourself. They, are, they do have talent. We're just waiting for that to be unlocked somehow. We've seen it from all three of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've seen it from all three of them. Probably most, probably the one that gets the most uh, criticism is Castro, and he's probably shown the most talent or um, uh, execution, so to speak, at the major league level. Yeah. Of the three. Like, Bay's had windows, and that's, that's about it, right? Yeah. Marcano's shown a little bit here and there, and he's shown a little bit more. But like what Castro's been able to do in the power department, the other yeah. two haven't had anything to show that. And so he's probably the worst of the three right now. I mean, Bay's right there too, right? I mean, who is it? Who is it? Bay, Castro, um, Hedges, and one other guy in this lineup. Um, Sawinski, I think. I think together they're like O for their last 84. And one for their last 100 and something. And that one hit was from Castro. And the rest of those guys are, you know what I'm saying? Like they're all on these big O for streaks. Yeah. And you, you just can't have four guys. I mean... Listen, Hedges is excluded from this conversation. Like I really, I, <laughs> I, I don't mean to keep doing. He is though. Yeah, he yeah. is. But Sawinski, if I if I said that 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 Castro has real power, Sawinski's more than that. Even he has to figure out a way to the the to end streaks. Yeah, and he's still young as well, but he's got to figure that out. When when Reynolds is not in the lineup anymore, this outfield, which is the deepest position we have, the problem is is none of them are 
I mean, Reynolds aside, none of them are making that next step. Right. Not Mitchell, Smith and Jigba. I mean, poor Swaggart. He's just had a, had a number of things going on throughout his career at this point. And, and that may be his story. In the yeah. end, his story might just be, man, it just wasn't in the cards. Every time I get good, I'm either hurt or there's something crazy going on. And you know what I'm saying? Like, look up his yeah. story. It, and that might be his story. Everyone who doesn't make it in the major leagues has a story of why. Yeah. Some of them are just as simple as I wasn't good enough. But it takes more than being good enough. There are players who are who were good enough to make it in the majors who never got there yeah. because of an injury or because of multiple injuries or because of this, that, and the other. There are stories to be told. And that's why it's so hard to make it here. All right. Let's rein it in a little bit. I'm going to go back to the replacing part. So there's my soapbox about clicking, about unlocking something to Mm -hmm. get closer to your potential, to your ceiling maybe even. I think that there's, you know, different things there. I mean, these guys are, I I just don't feel like they're grinding like, like, like they could be. Right. I don't feel like there's enough, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Either way, is it that we need new players? Is let's let's flip that. Let's do something different here. We just said give them time. This year, twenty twenty three, there is time. There's time to still write that. There's time to still unlock that. And if you don't think there's time, that's because you think this team has a legitimate shot. At winning a division, and I and I'd like to ask you, like, is winning a division important? Because you're not going anywhere in the playoffs. <laughs> Likely, right. you know what I'm saying. Likely. So I j- I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. I think if you stick to the process, this process rebuilds. We've talked about the rebuild structure. This is not the year. Next year is the year. We start holding them accountable to winning more games, mm-hmm. to see more months like we saw in April stretches like that we expect that yeah they should be adding players next year if we don't think we have them because you've done your four years of losing yeah. and i still think this team is uh because of what they did in april they're set up to be a little better than what we thought maybe now they can't keep caving the way they are right now right something has to click at some point and obviously o'neill cruz doesn't help things being you know with him being out we got three tommy johns already you know what I'm saying? Like we It's been rough. It's been rough. But but hey, next man up. You're supposed yeah. to have a deep system. This team is not deep because it's not old enough to be deep yet. This is still part of the process. Yeah. Henry Davis got up quick. I would have never thought up he got he got called up that quick. He really raced through. He did. Even even considering all the injuries. Yeah. So anyway, who else is there? Because we've got somebody else on the 40-man that's down there. Two more people that are on the 40-man that play infield. So do you start moving guys and start bringing Jared Triolo or Leo over Piguero up? I know Piguero's just in double A. He's having a great year, though. He's been hitting great as of late. Jared Triolo started off with an injury, obviously looked lost in the spring, started off with an injury, really slow, trying to, Come back, playing games, but not playing well. And it took him a long time. And I got to tell you, what you're going to see from Jared Triolo is a guy who walks before he hits. It's going to be a lot of the same thing. You're going to watch him go up there and be super passive and try to walk. I saw him play three games. Two of them at short, which wasn't pretty. And one of them where he played third, which, by the way, I'm just unimpressed with his arm. (laughs) I, I know the guy doesn't make errors, but... Yeah. I mean, he made him at short, but he doesn't make him at third. So, you know, apparently, I mean, he's got the hardware to prove that. But when he went up to bat, it was trying to get walked. And he was, oh, for however many at bats I saw him, plus four walks. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. that's what you're going to get. 
He's going to be a little it's bit more of, this, of the same. It's more of the same thing, except that is his approach. And I look at Bay and Castro specifically, and I don't think that that's their approach. And Marcano, but Marcano, I don't think is listening because he still attacks first pitches. <laughs> the other two are trying to be passive, and it's not working for them. Yeah, they're trying to watch pitches, and it's not working for them. But I'm just not sure that Jared Triolo is going to be any kind of answer for anything. He's a third baseman, right? He doesn't. I would again bring up somebody and put him in non their non natural position. Yep, just does it, which wouldn't make sense right now. No, and and you could say, and you would have a good argument. You could have a good argument to say, we got to try something. These guys aren't getting it done. That's fair. That's fair. But I'm sorry, the ceiling for all three of those guys, if they, if they could unlock something, I'd rather have them than whatever Jared Triolo could unlock. Right. I think Jared Triolo is probably a little bit safer. In, in, you know what I'm saying? In a sense. Yeah. Maybe a little bit safer. Maybe he's just going to give you what he is and you're going to say that's fine. But the fact that makes these guys so Castro for me is the big one because of the power. But the other two guys like Bay could be a game changer. He really could he be really, a, Yeah, he could. He could be a game changer. That speed is there. It's real. Mhm. He could be a game changer and he's got he's got pop. Yeah, he's definitely got the tools. It's just, you know, getting the tools to work right. So the thing is, is would you rather just give him an opportunity to unlock it or just keep this merry-go-round of calling a guy up, giving him a shot, and if it doesn't work out, sending him back? To, I think I think when you get to a certain point, you get to a certain point that these guys, you, you risk sending them down not helping. Right. And it's you have to figure it out here. If you if I send you down and you get your confidence back by hitting there, and then I bring you back up and you struggle again, I wasted all that time. I need to know if you can unlock it here, right? Not in AAA, because if you can't unlock it here, we're going to move on, right? And that's what we need to know. And a lot of you are already there. Let's move on. <laughs> and that's fair. <laughs> You're tired of watching this. Yeah. I'm just not sure that 23 is the year. Look, Piguero is close. I, I That's an that's a interesting one. Uh, obviously, the defense hasn't been great for him either. <laughs> and so that makes it hard. Well, I just the, don't know. The other thing that makes it hard is you know your shortstop's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Who also so it's not like who also makes errors at shortstop? Well, he he'd been playing better this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was that was a super short sample size, but even through the spring, like he didn't make a ton of errors, like we saw last year. Yeah, and you know that could be a step in the right direction. And you know he's coming back, and you know he's going to be playing shortstop. So what what are you going to fix? You're not going to fix anything. We're putting a piece of tape on it right now. We're just getting by. And that sucks we're, for a fan. It does. It does. And if we were actually expecting to win a division this year, we probably wouldn't be putting a piece of tape. We'd at least be putting duct tape on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're putting scotch tape on it right now. But you know what I mean? Well, like, I think you'd be holding some people more accountable too. Yeah. Yeah. And I And maybe that's the problem. I mean, we should be. Because I mean, here's you, the thing, this, this division was winnable. Yeah. We don't go down this you're stretch wrong, of hitting like this. It is winnable. But this is not working. Right, this is miserable to watch. I think like when Andy I, Haynes got fired from Milwaukee, he was the only one that got fired, by the way. Like, I think this has been, this has happened before. You don't have to say, well, that's his guy. That's his guy. It doesn't have to be his guy. Derek Shelton's a hitting coach. Like, before he was a manager, he was a hitting coach. Yeah. Is this driving him nuts? Is this his approach? Like, is this Derek Shelton's thing? Because if so, then let's just let's go one more step further. How yeah. long are we going to deal with this? I'm sorry. What this is, 
is a commitment to a plate approach. That is a one size fits all plate approach. And that does not line up with the quote unquote player centric organization. Right. The whole player centric thing was supposed to be a rub in a way because of the previous front office who tried to make every pitcher do the same thing. Player centric is supposed to be not for the players, not it's literally like we're going to do what's best for this player and his development. Right. Not we're going to get a game plan and make all of our players do this. Correct. And yet their hitting approach is starting to look so one that if you're a pitcher who, who likes to face that type of hitter, you're going to eat this team up. Yeah. And it feels like that's what's going on. Like teams are just eating it. I mean, it's bad. Yeah. How many hits in each of those games? Five hits. Three, no, six hits, seven hits, and five hits. So 20 hits in four games. No, no, the three wasn't. No, not three. It was seven. Well, we scored three. We scored four, three, three, and then shut out. So five hits were the day we scored four. (laughs) And then seven and six hits when we scored three runs and only five hits again in the shutout. And the one game was 11 innings, by the way. You had six hits in 11 innings. Yeah. Two for 17 runners in scoring position. I know I haven't been able to watch quite as many games as I'd like to, but I, I can remember watching again. I think it was Marcano was up to bat. Yeah, because Davis led off with a double. Marcano comes up and just hits a lazy fly ball to left field. It's a terrible at bat. You got to pull the ball. I, I don't care if you get out. If you ground out to second, Davis goes to third. If you fly out to right field and actually hit it decent. Henry Davis is moving up to the third base. You got to get that runner to third base with one. Yeah, you got to move him. Less than two, you know. Right. Mm. If you get him to third, yeah. Yeah. Situational hitting is real. Situational hitting needs to be taught. Situational hitting needs to be executed. So that goes back to Marcano in a way. You could be critical. This is going to be hilarious. You could be critical that Marcano is swinging at a ball that's on the outer half of the plate. If you know you need to pull it, then maybe take that pitch Mm -hmm. and wait for something in the middle or middle in or in that you can pull instead of just going with the pitch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's also like it's not easy. It's just hitting's not easy. No, and that's why I say wait wait for a pitch that you can do. It's a lot easier to wait for a pitch that's – that's going to be in or even middle than it is trying to pull 97 on the outer half. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it Mm -hmm. just is. So, and I know that that's part of this, um, uh, like taking pitches sometimes can, can get you the pitch you want. Wait for a mistake. Like I get that. This is a whole new thing. I feel like they're looking for walks. Like, that's what it feels like. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's no protecting with two strikes. When two strikes, when if you get behind with two strikes and the pitcher's executing his pitches and he throws you that fastball in the outer half and you do hit it to left field, I'm okay with that. You right. gave it a shot, right? But you also can't just take that pitch with two strikes and strike out. Maybe right. he drops the ball. Maybe it drops in for a single and Davis gets the third anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, just... I mean, you saw in the game today the, the 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 ball that hits up the middle and kicks off the pitcher. Like, you just put the ball in play and you get a run out of it. Like, that could have been an inning ending out if it doesn't hit the pitcher's foot. Uh, yeah. Majinski, I think, was in at that time. If it doesn't hit his foot and kick off into shallow right field and Henry Davis makes that throw, right? So we didn't get yeah. to see that. But put the ball in play. Anything can happen. Yeah. And they just don't do it. 
and it drives me nuts. And I understand it's all over the place. Like that's what we discovered last week. It's all over the place. It's not just the pirates, but it still drives me nuts. And I think that, you know, there are other teams who can have that approach and, and have it successfully. You know what I mean? But I just think this group of guys is probably not the approach. I think Andrew McCutcheon can do it. Sure. I think he's capable of that approach. I think that's part of his game. I don't know. And and to be honest with you, Jack Swinski would be that guy in my lineup that I'd be okay with him having that approach. Wait for something you can drive. Yeah. Because I think if he, if he could do that, and he's going to strike out more often, and but if Jack Swinski's your guy in the lineup who does that and hits 30 homers, which I think it's there. Yeah. Oh, it's clearly there. He's got 15 and we're not even halfway there. So right. it's clearly there. I just, with with him, it's with two strikes, you got to start swinging. Yeah. Just Once you get to two strikes, case. the approach has to change. Yeah. He even chokes up with two strikes. Yeah. it's And I think from what we looked up, what, Connor Joe's actually the worst? Yeah. It's not actually Sawinski. But Sawinski's still in the top 50. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're at the 50 minute mark. And that was a lot of complaining. And I know that it's you guys probably agreed with some of it. You probably disagreed with some of it. We'd like to hear, um, you know, respectfully, uh, you know, where you land on some of this stuff because we're all fans. We all get annoyed by different things and, and it's all fine. But I, I just don't see this team as a team that's winning the division this year. I, I didn't see that, rather. The only reason we see that is because the Cardinals have been as bad as they have been. Yeah. So I'm not motivated by that right now. I'm motivated by getting answers. I want to see debuts. I want to see cups of coffee because their kids are going to struggle in the show. Yeah. Get them up here and let them struggle this year so that we can start winning next year. We're running out of time. Andy needs to get up here and Andy needs to maybe have a little moment of struggle too. Yeah. Because he's got to learn from it. And most players are going to struggle before they unlock it. It's just the way it happens. Yeah. Padres coming into town. City Connect uniforms coming out on Tuesday. Um, Padres are 37 and 41. They spent $10 billion, $847 billion, and they stink. Um, they score a lot of runs. They're, they're loaded. This is the team that like you say that they stink. They're 37 and 41, but they're fourth place in the NL West. I mean, it's impossible to be below the the Rockies. So they're at least there, there. (laughs) but it's just the idea that, uh, you know, because they're loaded with all these guys at any moment, they could be amazing. On any day, they could be amazing. They get it yep. 14 home runs, it feels like, and strike out 14. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but they're a beatable team. They've shown that by being under 500. It's Rich Hill versus you, Darvish. Uh, Mitch Keller versus Blake Snell. And Luis Ortiz coming off of a gem. Yeah. Versus Joe Musgrove. So there's some pitching, but you know, I don't know. We'll see. Just, I can't be optimistic when the offense is this way. Right. And these pitchers are set up to just roll right through us. Yeah. I mean, I still, I mean, I've never really been a fan of Darvish. I don't understand it. He, um, he's had great years. 17 pitches. Yeah. 17 pitches, but he's had great years. I mean, this year he's a 484 ERA. He's just the the good thing about Darvish is when he's bad, he's very bad. So maybe we'll get him bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he's getting um, a little older. Yeah, Blake Snell's clicking now, so that's not good. And Joe Musgrove, we, we're familiar with him. We know he's good. Yeah. Um, and we saw him tapping into that before he left, so we knew it was there. I don't know. Um, sweep. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're probably getting swept. How can I say anything else? Uh, right? And No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't, I don't like these 
I don't like I don't like that. No. Because here's Why the thing. You? At the end of the day, I love baseball. I grew up with the Pirates. They're my team. I love watching Pirates baseball. Sometimes it's frustrating. <sighs> you take a deep breath and you say like, I just hope these players start doing better. I don't want to see the whole thing blown up. Right. I like some of these players. And I want them to do well. And there are some players that I don't like that I would like if they played well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why I don't like to complain about it. That's why I don't like to vent about it. That's why I don't like to be upset about it. Because also, even though the game's over and a sports team lost a game, like what am I going to go crawl in a corner and ignore my kids because the Pirates lost? Like, let's let's get real here. It's a baseball game. Uh, and yeah. I love it, obviously. But I still love it. They'll get there. Yeah. I, I, I believe that. So anyway. You got anything else? Uh, College World Series, uh, you know, Monday night, tonight, if you're listening on Monday, 7 p.m. ESPN. It's a 1-1 tie. Dylan Cruz, Wyatt Langford, the big, you know, Two top five draft picks. Who's the Pirates going to pick? Obviously not Langford. He's probably got the best power of the group, but obviously you're getting Dylan Cruz or you're getting Paul Skeens. We should talk about that soon. We should Maybe talk about... We yeah, we will. We'll, we should talk about our thoughts on that soon. Maybe you'll see Paul Skeens tomorrow night. Maybe. I mean, World Series is up for grabs. Right. So we'll see. Winner takes all. Florida, LSU, should be a good game. Um, Pirates have the night off. If you want to tune in and watch the College World Series, it is pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a lot of airs. Don't get frustrated. They're just kids. <laughs> but, all right, man, you got anything? Nah, man, I think I'm good. I think we've, I think I've been it enough. All right, ready? Deep, deep breath. Dang it, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Bucks. Oh, let's go, Bucks. Thanks for listening to my dad and Uncle Jake on the Bridge to Bucktober podcast. Follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Bridge the Number Two Bucktober. Don't forget to subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. Clear the deck, cannonball coming, and let's go, Bucks.